हेलो एवरी वन आई एम नितेश फ्रॉम सैमसंग एंड चैतन्य फ्रॉम एन मीडिया वी आर अबाउट टू प्रेजेंट कॉपी ऑफ लोड एंड दिस हैज बीन अ लॉन्ग स्टैंडिंग पैच सीरीज विच आई थिंक मेनी ऑफ द फोक्स यू हैव वर्क ऑन अर्लियर सो द आइडिया हियर इज लाइक यू इशू अ कॉपी ऑफ लोड कमांड टू डिवाइस एंड इट डज कॉपी इन साइड द डिवाइस लाइक मे बी समटाइम्स इट माई बी अक्रॉस द नेम स्पेस एज वेल and uh, the advantage we see here is uh, like mainly reduction in uh, uh, cpu and uh, pci bandwidth and uh, in fabrics case uh, mainly network bandwidth so the first effort was taken by martin in 2014 and uh, it was basically i octal based approach wherein uh, uh, like you make a payload and you submit along with that but um, that had some issues with like especially in stack devices wherein it was not scalable and uh, miklas came with uh, two wires approach which we have at present somewhat similar and uh, this is uh, like uh, compatible with dm layer so uh, that was that but after that uh, there was not much traction in community and uh, somehow it didn't make out and uh, we started with uh, simple copy once uh, the spec was ra ratified we uh, initially pushed the patch with a similar octal approach and uh, we had one uh, uh, in 2021 conference call we agreed like maybe we need to again support dm and uh, two bios is a must one and uh, from that we started and uh, in 2000 like l the previous lsf it was mainly like uh, people were complaining we don't have any infra to test like you might be having all the patch series but uh, there is no way how you can test it so uh, we addressed that as well and uh, now we have around i think it's in v10 and uh, it's stuck at that so in this uh, conference i want to mainly know like uh, what all things are blocking and what i can do to get reviewed by the previous discussion it's similar to that like uh, it went long but uh, at present i need some guidance like whether uh the present state where it is in is fine or uh, i need to do anything extra so the present state we have like a user interface was a copy file range uh, the existing one and um, for direct cases we are uh, going to copy offload and if it is cached again we fall back to generic file range so there is not much change so there is one new addition copy file range so uh from user perspective that is the one and from block layer uh, there's uh, like two bios initially we issue a read bio along with uh, the source information the sectors and uh, length and all along with the to token and this reaches driver layer and from driver layer we just fake a completion and come back and from uh, block layer again we issue a write command wherein Uh, once it reaches the driver through all trickling down from dm and all like we actually form a co copy command and we send it so that's the design and also we have emulation for cases where like let's say if uh, offload is not present as uh, demon suggested we added it and uh, this is super beneficial in fabrics case wherein like let's say if i have a device which actually doesn't copy off support copy offload but from host side i can still send a copy command and uh, Uh, through emulation i can complete uh, copy from host so we saw like around 30 to 40 times improvement in desktop environment and uh, even in server environment it was like 30 to 40 times better and at present uh, block layer wise architecture is capable to support x copy odx and uh, if uh, in nvme if uh, a copy across namespace comes in that also should be addressable to the present infra whatever we have and as far as testing like uh, the previous concern was about like how we can test so uh, qmu was support was there earlier as well and uh, this time we have null block and uh, uh, fabrics loop back is there uh, for loop uh, we are in uh, working on it like we have some poc kind of model but uh, yeah it's uh, we need to test more so maybe in coming forward i might add that and uh, from user perspective fio uh, vincent is maintaining uh, like his own private uh, repo wherein he keeps updating all the changes corresponding to kernel and also like i have a couple of uh, blk tests for uh, block and uh, 
NVMe, NVMe over fabrics. So if uh, this minimal series goes in, I will add the loop as well and uh, null uh, BLK test going further. So this was present infra, and uh, the upstream plan was like uh, basically we want to have uh, block device defo default uh, block operations, and uh, from block layer uh, offload and emulation and uh, DM layer there's like uh, it's, it doesn't do much like whenever there is a split we just uh, come back, so it's a basic infra for DM. And also the support wise, uh, like we have a queue flag wherein like we support only for DM linear at present because we felt it's a simpler use case and uh, the plan is to going further, like we might start expanding that to other DM target. Okay. And uh, yeah, so what we are planning is like at least we, if we have some uh, reviewed by or whether it's going right, wrong direction, anything, so we would, like to know, like uh, it's like at present it's in. There's not much clarity whether we require something or not. Oh, sorry, uh, I didn't look at, the, at your last uh, drop of this, so I'm, I'm surprised. Why DM linear? If you have the BDF copy file range, why do you need anything special in DM linear? Oh, sorry, uh, can you repeat? No, I don't understand why you're trying to push DM linear. What, what's special about uh, DM linear and, no, 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 and nothing, copy of Nothing, fold? nothing, nothing. No. Uh, that's just to show, like, if people uh, want to use copy of load, so that's one of the targets we have tested. It's more like uh, we don't want to enable copy of load for anything, everything, and it breaks. So uh, the thing is, like, for other targets, it happens, but uh, through emulation, we are doing it. Even though underlying device supports copy of load, we are not exposing it to DM layer. So it's more like uh, we don't want to break the existing setup. So as we start testing more and we feel more confident if it is working fine, then uh, we can start increasing more targets. I, I took a, another look this morning, as I mm -hmm. promised, and uh, you know, you've basically done everything that I asked for, so I, I can just go up and say no? It's never going to go in. I think it's. I think it's fine. I have like. They're not objections. I have two questions. So question number one is. When halfway through the copy offload not going in, the main use case was being able to do garbage collection, um, on stuff like zone devices or that kind of thing. So multiple source, single destination thing. Uh, where are we at? I haven't heard any uh, desire to have that capability in a long time. So are we? is this still a target? Oh, yeah. We want it. Um, better FS, DM zone, and there's plenty of places where we can use it. I think it's useful, but I strongly believe it should not be in the first round. Agreed. 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 <laughs> okay. So I... So because that, uh, that has derailed the whole, this whole thing for quite a long time, for, for years, literally, that we're always going back and forth. Do we have an implementation? Yeah, not really. Do we have a use case? Yeah, not really. Do we have hardware? Yeah, not really. And so we're always going back and forth. Yeah, we probably would need to get one or the other. And so we always have been waiting for each other to do well, something. The problem is it's also and been a moving target, right? Because when we started and there's the offload, not. it was about provisioning VMs from a golden image. Yeah, right? sure. And then it changed to, oh my god, the whole world is going zoned. We need this for garbage collection, which is a very different use case from the VM provisioning thing. So the target moved yep. to a different model. And now we're sort of gravitating towards the original approach again, which mm -hmm. is why this series works. And I, I think it looks fine. Okay. So, so same here. So the, the, my second. Again, it's not an objection. In SCSI, we, we ran into the issue that we had no way ahead of time to establish whether given device A and device B, can these devices talk to each other? And uh, they may both report that they support copy offload, but we don't know if they support <coughs> copy offload between each other. Um, so we spend work in SCSI to try and formalize that. And the same thing is happening now in NVMe. 
Uh, so in the current code, your checks are, does this device support copy offload and does this device support copy offload? But we, we should have that be a little more, more, bit more sophisticated, right? In the NVMe case, initially here, we can go, is this the same block device? That would be a fairly good heuristic for whether we should go down the copy offload path. And, and for the SCSI stuff, I'll wire it up for both the, the token based and the extended copy. Uh, I'll rebase my patches on top of your series, and I mean, I don't have any objections at that point. At this point, I don't think. Yeah, I agree. I think we, we definitely should allow copy only on the same device for now, because the checks are obvious and simple, and they can be extended later if we can, if we want to enable multiple devices between multiple devices. I mean, we don't want to go down the copy offload path if we think it's going to fail, right? Because it's not free, right? So the more sanity checking we can do upfront, is this even going to work? The better. Okay, I... Yeah, but I think we'll need some more flags again, or maybe some metadata. No, I, I mean, if you have it, I forget what you called it, block queue copy or whatever. Yeah, yeah, queue Just flags. add a check whether the two B devs are the same. That would be a good start. For SCSI, we'd need it to be slightly more sophisticated than that. I can wire oh. that up. It's not a big deal. I'm just saying that the fact that a device has a copy offload capability doesn't mean that this is going to work, right? So we need to establish a better heuristic for when should we attempt to, to use the copy offload uh, capability. No, that might be uh, optimization, but I see one issue, especially with uh, DM devices, right? Like maybe. Uh, down the layer, it might be single device, but uh, from host. No, but I, I think for the initial drop, you should not even consider that case. So, yeah, sure, you may have two uh, DM linear block devices on the same yeah. physical devices, and a copy between them would work. Yeah, that's but also don't even consider it. Like yeah. the BDEF pointer, is it the same or something simple so, like that for now? So, for SCSI, we actually, you know, have, we can go in and check the SCSI name. And what I did, my second generation patch is was I validated that that, you know, cookie essentially was the same between the two BDEVs. So I had that copy identifier in the BDEV and I would only attempt to do the copy offload if that cookie was the same. And in, in practice, the, that cookie was, you know, reported by the SCSI device. For NMIMI for now, the BDEV being the same is a good start. Once we go to multi-namespace or whatever, We'll refine it and we'll have the reachability architecture in NVMe that expresses this again ahead of time. Can you do between namespace A and namespace B? Are they even able to talk to each other? Would you need a user space interface to, to allow user space to determine if it's going to work so that way they don't waste time in case it's not? If the copy cannot be offloaded, the code has the emulation, so the block layer is not going to do the bio read and write cop copy emulation. So the user sh should not be concerned to, to check if the, the, it's going to work or not. It sh for the, as far as the user is concerned, it should always work, unless there is an IO error, of course. It's only the offload. Is it going to be offloaded by hardware or not? That depends on the setup. Uh, so I noticed on the slide uh, NVMe fabrics, right? Because I know I have seen slideware. I have no idea if there are products. I have no idea if anyone in this room actually cares, but at least in theory, you could have two completely separate devices that could talk to one another over the fabric and it would work. Now, how we would actually make that determination, I don't want to even think about it, but I'm curious, is that in fact something people care about today? I hope the answer is no. Uh, no. <laughs> I, so again, we, both SCSI and NVMe, at least almost soon, NVMe have the ability to express this kind of relationship between devices, right? Yeah. And again, but e this even, is... Even if even in theory, if the protocol is osmosis between, between two disk drives in the back of something, right? I mean, it doesn't have to define how they communicate, right. just that it is possible for these two seemingly distinct devices to communicate with each other out of band. Whether or not it ever get imp it gets implemented is another story. Well, right, and I was, that's the question I was asking, is, is that something we need to 
worry about when the first no, so, so the reason, no, the reason, no, no, no. Fab the reason Fabrics is there is not that you communicate above Fabrics, is that you can offload to a Fabric target and do the copy without going through the network. So it's not two targets, it's single target offload the copy. That's the reason why right. it's there. Sc SCSI has that defined in the protocol. I'm not aware of anyone that's implemented it. Any two right. devices anywhere in the world have the ability to describe each other and perform copy operations. I don't know anybody that's implemented it. NVMe did not put that into their protocol yet. It is simply namespace to namespace within the same subsystem. You cannot get, there's no way in the protocol to express a relationship between two different namespaces in two different subsystems. What do you so, mean yet? What are you, a glutton for punishment? I, somebody has expressed an interest that they might come forward with that in the future. I don't worry too much about what those people say with those kind of statements. If, if it shows up, then we'll worry about it. Not there now. Anyway, for all the cases we realistically would want to care about, we have a way of establishing this ahead of time. Yeah, so what that means by fabrics is a, a fabric device that has multiple namespaces, you copy between the namespaces within that subsystem out in the fabric. And the subsystem does the copy for you, so it never comes into the host, it never goes back out to the destination, it just saves you a lot of transfer. All right, we'll never go faster than a host copy. <laughs> That's not true. It, it can go faster than a host copy. Oh, okay. uh, no, but at least our results showed, like with emulation, uh, it was faster for whatever the test cases we had, at least. I don't know. I've got, I've got two PSD copy offload, I'll tell you, man. <laughs> I did two implementations in storage array, and, it, you know, it's like it, it, um, never, it never met the expectations of those people who use it. Uh, no, no, I got your point. But uh, the emulation layer, right, it's more like you do read and write. So maybe copy offload might yeah, yeah. be off, but at that time you can just This switch is a good off. conversation for a beer, not right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some implementations do read writes, and sometimes the read writes in the storage array can be slower than the read writes on the host. But those implementations that are able to do snapshots or clones or something like that can do very fast copies for those specific instances. So copy offload has this, uh, there's no way to really quantify what the performance is. And it's like, it's like, it, it's like, it has its own version of write amplification with a vengeance, right? <clears throat> you know, and it's like, it's like one command, one IOP, that has a cost that really can't be measured. <laughs> yeah, uh, so the blocker still remains, I guess. Like we agreed, but uh, we see lack of reviewed by comments and. <laughs> I'll commit to officially adding reviewed buys and I commit to wiring up discussy pieces for both token and extended copy. Sure, that would be helpful. And uh, Christian, it's not here, okay. So I just want to check whether the copy file range plumbing looks okay. Oh, Christian is there, hi. Uh, like, uh, have you had any look uh, in uh, copy file range plugin, like plumbing for co uh, copy offload? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, like, uh, did you get any time to have a look on uh, like latest series? Like, I re uh, reworked on your comments. Like, especially uh, negative values are coming for copy file range. So that I fixed. But uh, I haven't recently it? taken a look. The last time was the, my last status is when uh, I pointed out those uh, issues to you. Yeah, so yeah. I need to take a look. Sure. Sorry. Okay, apart from that, like, uh, do you see any issue with the current plumbing? <laughs> Give me time to review this again. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, uh, I think uh, that's it. Like, mainly we wanted to have some, like, initial cut, and on top of that, like, we have plans to include subsequent uh, additions, uh, maybe the garbage collection, multi range, and all. So, yeah, so I hope uh, I'll get review buys. Thank you.